Hey YouTube, Shane here and welcome back to Vehicle Garage. This time I wanted to give you an update on what I've been doing with my 3D printer in the last two years. So this time now that I've had my original 3D printer for over two years, I wanted to give you a quick update on how things are going, what's been good, what's been bad, what's worked and what hasn't. So first things first, I've added a second printer to my setup. It's also an Ender 3 Pro, just like the one I started with originally. And speaking of the one that I started with originally, I've made quite a few changes and upgrades to that printer since the last time that you saw it. One of the upgrades, if you go back to my original 3D printing video that I did about two and a half years ago, talking about trying to make car parts and one of the challenges being the size of car parts versus the size of the Ender 3 platforms build area or build volume and the Ender 3 is a little on the small side for a lot of things that you might try to print or design for the car so my original printer I got the Ender extender kit and what that does is it takes it it takes the build plate and makes that 400 millimeters by 400 millimeters. There's also an additional Ender Extender kit that you can get to increase the height as well. I have not added that kit um, to the printer yet. At some point in the future, I will probably do that as well. One of the other things that I've done to upgrade my original printer was add a dual Z-axis kit. So rather than just having a screw on the one side that controls the z-axis which raises and lowers the gantry i now have two screws and two motors so that both sides go up and down together so especially after i added the ender extender kit the gantry was sagging a little bit so i wanted to go ahead and fix that by adding the second z screw kit the sagging gantry wasn't the only problem that i ran into after I made the printer physically larger. The other thing is I went to install the BL Touch Kit, which is the sensor that automatically levels the bed for you and hopefully, you know, ideally takes some of the headache out of it. Um, I had some issues with that, so I ended up just taking that back off. Um, and I do still have a little bit of trouble with the larger printer now, getting everything perfectly level. So what I typically do now is when I start a print and it's printing the skirt before it starts printing the actual object is I go in and manually adjust on the Z screws either side to get it just perfectly level and that seems to take care of most of the issue but um, it does make it a little bit more involved to print something on the larger printer which is why I ended up buying a second printer in the first place. And then other than that, on the first printer, there's just a few other little things I've done, like adding a couple of LED lights so that when the printer's running, I can see things without leaving lights on in the room, which is a nice little touch. Also, I don't think I mentioned it way back two years ago in my original 3D printing video. I'm using Octopi to control the printer. So adding Octopi was really great since the Ender 3 does not have any Wi-Fi or any way to connect to the internet. So by setting that up on my Raspberry Pi, that gives me the ability to set up a camera to monitor the prints, and then I can control the entire printing process from my laptop. Again, going back to my original video from a couple of years ago, the very first part that I printed, or very first car part that I 3D printed, was the hood release handle for my Audi A4. That's still going strong, I've had no problems, and have been very happy with that print overall. Of course, since then, there are several other things that I have printed for the car. I 3D printed a gauge pod, which is living happily on the dash of my S10 Blazer, sitting in direct sunlight, and that's had no discoloration, no warping, and no problem, other than the adhesive keeps letting go and it keeps falling down. One of the other car parts that I did make from scratch, and probably what I'm most proud of thus far, is the window trim for the S10 Blazer. If you haven't seen that, I did make a video over a year ago of that process where I took an original part that I had found and went into Tinkercad in, in the most simplistic way possible and created a 3D model and made a new part. So I have actually been printing these. Um, this is a this is a set of those trim pieces that I designed off the build plate, still stuck together with their support. But I've been selling those on eBay for the last year and a half or so, and 
I don't know what the total number is off the top of my head, but I've sold like 20 or 25 sets of window trim. So really happy that I've been able to make these parts since again, this is something that no one else makes. It's been discontinued for, I don't know, a couple of decades maybe. And uh, it's been helping people out to put that finishing touch on their S10 Blazer if you're missing that little piece of window trim. And that has also held up pretty well out in the Florida sun. Um, the, the very first set that I did put on my S10 Blazer has been out there for two years and it's still going strong. I haven't printed too many other car parts. I've made a couple of little switch housings. Um, I made a set of wire separators for my spark plug wires and just a few other little things, but nothing else significant and nothing else that I've designed thus far. That armrest or door pull for my S10 Blazer, I have still not gotten around to designing and printing that. But that was the original reasoning behind getting the Ender Extender Kit and making the build area large enough so that I could go ahead and make that. At some point in the future here, I'm still going to get to that. So keep an eye out on the space and I will make a video about that when I get to it. Right now, I am still printing in PETG but I do want to get into trying nylon and a few of the other things to see how that compares to the PETG for the car parts. But again, everything that I have printed in PETG for the car has held up just fine and I've been pretty happy with. One of the issues, of course, with 3D printing or you know, maybe specifically the Ender 3 or affordable type platforms is it's a lot of tinkering and a lot of DIY to get things set up just right. So you inevitably run into some problems. So there's always things that you have to tinker with and work on and problems that you're going to run into while getting these things set up and just really dialed in. And then you print enough, things get out of whack and you have to go back and dial it all back in yet again. I run into a few issues when trying to update the software and reflashing the boards. Both of my printers are running E3 Mini SKR version 2.0 boards and I killed one of them by doing an improper flash on it. The latest issue that I just ran into with my second direct drive printer is the board just randomly stopped working on its own. I, I didn't change anything, I just went to print some more trim pieces that, after I sold a few on eBay and it just fried and it stopped working. So what I'm going to do next is upgrade that to the newer version of the Mini E3 board, the, the version 3.0. Um, from everything I read it looked like it's pretty similar but it has better cooling. So if that had something to do with the other board getting fried, I wanted to go ahead and spend a couple more bucks, get the latest one and hopefully have better cooling and prevent this one from getting fried. So here is the second Ender 3 that I bought. This one's had most of the upgrades that my other first printer has had with the exception of the Ender Extender Kit. This, this one's still got the standard Ender 3 Pro build volume. The only other thing that's really different on this one versus the other one is the fact that this has a direct drive kit and the larger original printer does not. This one also does not have the second Z screw kit that I added. Mostly because this one again is not as large as the other printer with the Ender Extender and the gantry doesn't sag quite as badly although I don't know if you can see that there is a tiny bit of play there, but so far it hasn't really affected the print quality on this machine. This machine, just like my other one, is running the Big Tree Tech Mini E3 board um, version 2.0. And now when I turn the machine on, it does not boot up. I just get a blank blue screen. I've tried a couple of different things. So at this point, I am pretty sure I've fried the board. So I'm going to go ahead and replace it with the latest version, the version 3.0 board, which has a couple of minor differences. Um, from everything I've read, I believe the biggest difference is the cooling. So for reference, here is the version 2.0 board. This is the same board that's currently installed in this printer. And then here is my And here's my version 3.0 board, the new one. I haven't even taken this one out of the package yet. 
don't know if you can see it there, but this has some additional heat sinks and again, supposed to be better cooling. Other than that, I don't think there's too much difference between these two boards, but I haven't fully looked up what all the differences between the two are. So again, if you're interested in uh, upgrading to the 3.0 board, I'll throw a link down in the description. So let's go ahead and get started swapping out the old 2.0 board for the new 3.0. And now we're all exposed so we can get in here and unplug all the connections, take the board out, put the new one in, and put all the connections back. Alright, so here we are mostly installed except for the ribbon connector for the display cable which goes right here, and then the case fan, or the board fan which goes in under here. So let's screw this back in and then I will connect those as well and we'll be done. back in its home. Wire right, the printer back up. Like I said, I'm still running OctoPie on both of these printers, so fire up the Pi there. Hmm. Well, that's not good. Blank screen again. Well, that might have been a bonehead move. I had put the micro SD card back in here without thinking about it, and this had the firmware that I tried to flash onto the version 2 board that fried it, so hopefully I didn't fry this one too. But uh, it looks like now I need to go download the version 3.0 firmware and try to flash it back. So let's give that a shot. Alright, well, let's try this again. SD card in. Raspberry Pi unplugged. Power on. Give it a second. Fingers crossed. Come on, splash screen. Splash screen! Okay, cool. <laughs> well, I almost screwed that up again, I think. But we are back on track, so. Go ahead and take this out. Hook the Pi back up and get back to uh, trying to test print here. Okay, so here's another problem I just ran into. Fun uh, stuff with 3D printing. I'm trying to print off of OctoPie here, and I don't know if it's because this is a new laptop, most likely, um, or because of the new board, but I'm missing some settings needed for the OctoLapse, so it's not wanting to print for me. So I guess I'm gonna load that onto the SD card and print directly from the machine itself. This Okay, finally got started. Okay, something's off there. Stop that and start it again. Okay, after a little more trial and error, it looks like I finally got a print started. So we'll check back on that here in a few minutes and uh, see how it's looking. Well, after quite a few more test prints and quite a few failures, I did start getting some clean prints off of the machine again. Then with a little more tinkering after that, I got some of the cleanest prints I think I have ever gotten off either one of my 3D printers. Unfortunately, shortly after that, I started having a few issues again where I was getting some blobs and zits and imperfections in the print. So, like I said earlier in this video, that's kind of the nature of 3D printing, especially with these types of machines, is every time you change something, you've got to go back and do a little bit more tinkering to really get your prints dialed in. But I think that's where I'm going to wrap this video up here. Thank you very much for watching all the way until the end. If you have, make sure you click that thumbs up down below and like this video if you did. It really helps the channel out. And make sure to check back again soon because I will be putting out some more 3D printing content in the very near future. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.